kick off this motherfucker. Three, two, one. Boom! And welcome to the Big Honker Podcast brought to you by Pacific Calls. I'm Jeff Stanfield with the world famous Andy Shaver. It's here. I'm not ready for it. 48 hours, we'll, we'll be done with the first morning of Goose Hunting from this point right now. Shoo! Maybe. And you, and you said if it's raining, you're going you're Maybe three to five inches. It's only 1230, Jeff. They might be pulling trucks out of the field still. Oh, don't in say 48 that hours. I don't want that. I don't think it's going to be heavy, heavy rains until Saturday afternoon. Oh, so I get to hunt Sunday in it? <laughs> yes. Well, if you're going to hunt Saturday or Sunday, I guess you don't have to hunt either morning if you don't want to. Oh. You've got that time put in. Could you imagine? Yeah, I can. I'm not hunting Saturday or Sunday. An opening weekend without. Yeah. Imagine. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. A lot of. Uh, it's crazy how things change as you age. Yeah, it's called wisdom. You think that, so? Yeah, that's what that, yeah, you get pretty damn smart. That's just, why I'll give you a perfect example. That's why if you meet an old guy, he tells you, you don't get married till you get older. That's I don't wisdom. I agree with that. So you're telling me you how old were you when you got married? Twenty four. Yeah, I see he's waited till he's thirty nine at least. Yeah, but if you do that, you're stuck in your ways. You don't you don't budge as much. <laughs> you don't think you're stuck in your ways now? Yeah, but me and my wife, we got stuck in our ways together. Y'all had been fucking dating for fifty years. Right. Right. I mean, it's not like y'all were 24 and you've been dating for two years. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is if you waited until you're 39, like, could you imagine, like, throwing a whole other person's personality into that shit show? I say get it, get it, get into it early. My marriage advice is don't get married until you're 58. But if you do do that, just wait till you, at least till you're at least 27 or 28. Go see the world. Go do things you want to do before you get married. Because once you have kids, you'll never, first of all, People say, well, we got to wait to have kids when we can afford them. You can't ever afford them little bastards. They're cheap, expensive. Most expensive pets in the world are kids and grandkids. So, anyways, if you're happy and you're with someone, I don't know how the hell we got on this. We're both married either. and been married for a long time. Happily married. Yep. So, here we go. We're going to talk to the young people that are here today. We got Nolan from Nolan Divine. Nolan's from Fort Collins, Colorado. Yep. Caleb, is it Pfeiffer? Is that how you say it? Yep. Are you kidding, Michelle? You don't know who Michelle Pfeiffer is? Uh-uh. How the hell do you not know how Michelle Pfeiffer how, is? How old are you, Caleb? Wow. 22. Man. That's how. Mm. That's how, right there. If you were about... I bet you've seen her before. Oh, she's a smoke show. <laughs> Boy, I'm going to tell you what. There's a lot, of, a lot of long showers taking Michelle Pfeiffer in some people's days, I promise you. Probably not anymore. Probably not like No, used not to like be. used to be. Hollywood Nights. She's in that. I guarantee you hadn't seen that. Ooh. Mm-mm-mm. Smoke show. Have you seen the old Batman? She was Catwoman on it. Oh, okay. No, it's Anyways, it's a maybe can too. Oh. When she was young, she was gorgeous. She's still probably a pretty lady, but she's old now. Never was my type. I don't like the eyes. Too far apart. <laughs> too far apart. <laughs> I have standards. So a narrow eyed woman is what you're looking for in one. More narrow than more so wide. Jesse I, got I would... hit. You just get one fucking one eye right in the middle and that's it. Well, no, like I think I'd rather have my eyes closer together than too far apart. You know, so Jennifer Aniston, her eyes are closer together. They're good. They're yeah. They're perfect. Okay. They're good. They're nicely proportioned. Nicely proportioned. Yeah. It takes a tape measure up there first. Right. Yeah. 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 You got to yeah. measure these things, right? I've, shit. I've married a woman that uh, one leg's longer than the other. So you know, last thing I need is that it that was confirmed today. She went to a chiropractor. And he said her legs too long. He measure left leg is half an inch to three quarters of an inch longer than her right leg. Why didn't you just measure her yourself? I I did yesterday. Kinda. You did, yeah, oh. yeah. She had like with me. It was a it was a gyno Cairo, all in one. So, it all worked out nicely. I did not want to hear that part. Oh, of Jesse. Oh, Jesse's okay. like my daughter. Sorry. Sorry. Well, it's you like, asked. It's like me talking about your mom wearing negligee. You don't like that. Well, you asked. It's the same thing. I don't. I mean, you set yourself up for oh, that. Yeah, I did not want to. Mm. Now, when I see old Lefty Lena Eileen today, I'm gonna think, God dang it. Yeah, I wish you wouldn't have done that. But it's hurt her. Uh, her her left knee is out of whack. Just from like overcompensating. So it did fix her? Uh, this, no, 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 Jeff. This is a process. that You don't know how the chiropractors work. Yeah, they do. They get them get some money out of you every week. About, about 12 appointments. <laughs> so it is. <laughs> right, yeah. So it's going to cost $2,400 to fix her. Right. Today Today was just the x-rays and the the, the initial $200 or whatever it is. So be, yeah, 12 times two, $2,400. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. He told his buddy, he said, uh, wouldn't put me down for a new down payment on that Ranger I'm buying now. <laughs> and suckers born every yep. day. So, so Caleb, where are you from? Washington State. Washington State. Do you have a girlfriend? Nope. Boyfriend, because nope. this is 2024, and well, you know, we talked earlier. We have to be open minded around here. Yeah. So no girlfriend at all. Nothing. You love waterfowl hunting. Oh yeah. Pat, mo- most favorite thing in the world. 
Do you have a favorite football team? No. You don't watch sports at all? I don't watch sports. Pull your microphone closer. Yeah. Get it right up so in there. Wh- you too, Nolan Devine. What are your hobbies when hunting season's not here? Well, I just work all summer, so I'm an excavator operator. Excavator operator. So if we get stuck this weekend, you're the man. I'll, I'll do, yeah, you're the man. Okay. Yeah. So okay, you work all year long waiting for hunting season to get here. Yeah. So okay. I work in the summer until October hits, and then I leave and go guide. How old are you? Twenty two. Where did 22. you guide before here? Uh, up there with Evan Stabilitas at Tornado Country oh, okay. last year. So just north of here, then, right? So this is your second year in Texas. So this of shooting small, a lot of small geese are going to be shooting some speckle bellies this yeah. year too. It'll be a different ball game. Yep. Those, those, I'm not throwing any shade at anybody that primarily hunts lessers, but they're easy. Oh, they are. I love chasing them at home. They're easy. Speckle bellies got to finesse a little bit, but it'll be good. So um, you're saying the little candidates are the easiest, speckle bellies are next, and then snow geese last. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I about mean, big candidates? I don't know. Like, it's just, they're just, Honk. you just don't know. Yeah. Like, you might go out there and they just bow up and do it right. And then, like, for whatever reason, the next day, like, they don't want to be anywhere near you. Little geese are easy, though. So we're, you're from Washington State? Yeah. What's the weirdest bird? Have you shot a Eurasian widgeon out there ever? No. I Have don't you get seen no one widgeon. ever? So you're hunting on the eastern side or the yeah. western side? East. So you're hunting over there by Trevor and them with Pacific. Yep. Okay. So do you hunt with them guys ever? Uh, Once, but not very often. That area really surprised me because if you dropped me out of an airplane and you put me in eastern Washington and you said you have to guess where you're at, I would never have guessed it's eastern it's Washington. Same. It don't look no different than Pierre, South Dakota, or Amarillo, Texas. I mean, it really – I was surprised by that. And then when you get into the Cascades, it turns into a liberal utopia of pretty with homeless people <laughs> everywhere, so – Nolan, you hunted here last year, second year. Yeah. You fished all summer? Yep. Did you catch any tra- trophy fish? Yeah, got some really big fish this year. Any records or any personal bass or anything? Mm, I mean, a lot of client personal bass, but nothing that I haven't seen. Did you see oh, Sasquatch yeah. this year? No. Nope. Seen bears? Success. Yeah. Do you have any run-ins with bears? Nothing too crazy this year, no. Um, some guys had them float by the boat, but that was about it. Float by the boat? Yeah. Oof. What were they just like, swimming in the river and y'all were at the same place? Yeah, so we anchor up like below a rapid and the bear went across the rapid and got swept off his feet. The bear did? Yeah. <laughs> Dick. Floated right by. <laughs> How close? Uh, 15, 20 feet. But it's not in attack mode at that time, right? No. Like it's just trying to I not get out of the water. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how big were these bears? Uh, were these grizzlies? Yeah. A, Fuck that uh, shit. <laughs> but like, I don't know. A grizzly in Wyoming is like the size of a black bear in Alaska. Well, how big are we talking? Eight, nine hundred pounds. Ooh. At 15 feet? Hell yeah. No. It's like a giant male. A normal bear is probably that 6 to 750 range. An 800-pound bear swam within six yards of your boat. Let's don't talk feet. Let's talk five yards. You could. It was two oars, so I have a nine-foot oar, and it was nine feet off the end of the oar. So. That's- Closer than I want to be. Like I said, Jeff, you're safe. It's just trying not to drown. Well, yeah, that's they say. Tussucker tries to get in the boat with you. <laughs> right. Now, that might be a problem. I saw Coach Steele sunk a damn canoe I was in one time. He's about the size of a small bear. Yeah. So I could, that, damn, that don't make you worry. How, their head's got to be that big. Yeah, you get used to them after a while. Like, oh, yeah, every day. Mm-hmm. We went up, and if you go looking for them, you can easily see 20 in a day. If you get out of the car and hike for them. Do you think you're too, too whoa, comfortable whoa, whoa, around whoa, bears? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're going to get out of the car and hike. To see a bear. No, like if you're like elk hunting and stuff. When you're glassing, you can easily see 20 in a day. How many can you see from a car? Uh, This year we saw nine when I drove around with my buddies. See, I wouldn't mind seeing one from the the safety of a vehicle. We saw nine grizzlies and four black bears in one day. Hmm. In close, closer? Uh, Closest one was probably 50 yards. So you've never been scared on these fishing trips? Have you I ever mean, had to deploy your pepper spray? No, I carry a gun. Oh, have you ever had to too. deploy your pepper? Your, I've pulled my gun, gun on plenty of brown cows coming through the brush. Oh, thinking it was a bear? Yeah, but I've been there. Don't before. shoot those. Yeah. I was. We were in the Boundary Waters fishing one time, and it was by a rapid, and there, we'd seen a black bear. In fact, to me, that's a damn eighteen foot Kodiak grizzly bear because I'm not. We don't have them. Yep. And my buddy had his Labrador with us, and she was with us and running around. I didn't know she'd she swam across the damn stream come all the way back where we're fishing at and i heard cl- same shit coming through the brush and shit 
And I was, I was fixing to jump off the freaking ledge there into the water. I thought, I, I can swim real good, but I ain't fighting a fucking bear. And that damn dog scared the shit out of me. I kind of learned now not to go anywhere that you can't see far. Yeah. Up there. Right. It's You can leave that to the non-locals. They can go in there. Have y'all had anybody close to y'all get attacked by a bear lately? Uh, I think Yellowstone this year. There was that three-year-old girl that got pulled out of her tent by a black bear. God mm. dang. Her parents left a dirty camp. and Oh, were the did, parents did there? Ki- did it parents kill the there? little girl? Yeah, the parents were there. I think she's okay. Good. Good. That's I'm telling you right now, the most dangerous said it over and over again. You gotta watch for serial killers and bears in national parks. Yeah. It's the biggest place in the world to get abducted. Have you ever been abducted? Nope. Never? Close? Nope. Who would nope. want this? I mean, come on. I don't know. You gotta have you you don't date at all. Nope. Why? Been single for two years. Well, there's a difference between being single and dating. Oh, I've dated in the Happy past, single but... and he loves cops. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not just no no so are you looking like if we, there was a young lady around here that was interested nope my mind sits on birds for the winter We're good. <laughs> that's a good thing i guess i don't know how you guys do it you got anything are you, you, you are you nervous at all i'm ready to go are you dialed but, in baby dialed in what are you looking forward to the most about being around here uh chasing a new bird because we don't have specs at home so no, there's a lot of them to chase around here. Well, we start on Saturday morning. It's Thursday, and we've got a lot of birds. Should be a good opener. It's going to be wet. Um, when is this coming out? Tomorrow. If you're coming out here tomorrow, if you're one of the people that's coming in the next five days for the Veterans Hunt Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, make sure you bring a rain jacket with you. It just blows my mind, people that won't look at weather. There'll be some guy come here, didn't know it was going to rain. Had no clue. Yeah, well, shit, look at the weather. Or they bring hay dudes and no <laughs> other shoes. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna get yeah, bring some damn some muck boots for sure. Get on chin gear real quick and order you some scout boots and have them here for you at least. All right, let's get in group number two coming in here. Let's do Thank half. you guys. Thank, Thank you all very much. Thank you. We'll do this more and more and we'll have an update every week. I try to. Happy and Hunter, come on. Oh shit. Happy O'Toole. Yeah, let those guys get out. Happy still has the best first day ever to be on the podcast. Best first day. Oh yeah, your your story. About your transgender cousin. Oh, yeah, I messed that one up, didn't I? Is he still is he still transitioning? Is he a man now, or is he I'd, a woman? Or I what's haven't going? really had an update lately. I haven't seen him for three years now. So you don't know then? Not really. So no. Just some big old gal come up and slap you upside the head. That'd be her, because that's a big guy too, or what, or whatever the hell they yeah. are. Yeah, I mean he was D one college, I think maybe defensive end. I mean that's yeah. Are you ready to wrestle Zach this year? Born ready. Born ready. He stays ready. He ain't got to get ready. He stays ready. Who are you taking if Zach and him wrestle? Who are you going to take? Zach. Zach. I love you, Happy. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got plenty of, you know, you can throw that weight around. Yeah. What do you weigh? Around two, 200. Zach's what, 180 something now? Yeah. Zach's a little bit taller than you, though. Yeah. Zach's got a lot more muscle, too. I think he's going <laughs> to whip your ass. Hunter we'll just see. coming in from the top rope. You're not afraid of it. I mean, you know. You, it's wrestling, wrestling, not fighting. Yeah. Either way. You got Zach, Zach either way. I got Zach either way. Okay. How did you we'll avoid see. the ears? The ears? The cauliflower ears. I wore the headgear. Oh, you did? Yeah. Why would people not wear headgear? I don't know. I don't understand that. Zach's got a bad batch of cauliflower right now. Yeah. He's got like his whole right ear is pretty well cauliflower, but he said one part of it. I guess hadn't calcified, mm-hmm. and that got hit, and Oof. now like it's blown up on him. Yeah, he won't drain them either. Why not? I don't know. I asked him. He said, "Won't do it." A lot of people want cauliflower ear for I, some reason. I don't. I don't either. I, <laughs> I want to put earbuds in my ears. <laughs> right. I saw an old man in um, the Detroit airport. I mean, an older guy, like I'm 65 or something. He had mm-hmm. fucking cauliflower ears. That's a some bitch right there. You don't want to fuck with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, my that's wife's already right. told me that I gotta stop if I. Get close to getting it. Good Are you not is, wearing a deal? No. Good thing is I don't train hard enough to get it, so <laughs> yeah. we're good. So all that is is basically your ear just getting rubbed on all the time, right? Blood. So like you'll pop blood vessels in there, and then it leaks blood in there, and then that blood calcifies. But you yeah. can drain it. It's liquid. You can drain right. it. It'll still mess your ear up no matter what you do. Do, almost. do all the young kids wear the headgear now? Is it required? Um, practice, at least when I was in high school, it was not required, but it's required in tournaments or any matches. What's the reason for people not wearing them? Do they think it just makes them look soft? Is that what it's about? I don't know. I mean, it's uncomfortable, really. But Well, and they don't stay in the same place. Yeah, it's just So, like, you like, get busy and... Yeah. Like, um, what was it? I didn't really wear it during practice as much unless we were going live. But, um, the headgear, if you don't have it on right, it'll, it'll still rub your ears pretty bad and give you cauliflower ear. 
Well, Hunter, we'll get to you now since everybody knows Happy's from Clear Lake, Iowa, and his mom's a teacher. And where you live in Homa? I live in Gibson, but I'm about 15 minutes from Homa. Homa, Louisiana, for yep. everybody that doesn't know that record. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. You outweigh Happy by 100 pounds almost, right? Yep. Could you take Happy in a wrestling match? I wouldn't even try to wrestle Happy. He's got too much uh, confidence. And he's quick. Yeah, he's probably really fast. So you know no on that? No, I don't fight anymore. Okay. <laughs> fight. <laughs> it's a wrestling match. It's yeah. not fighting. Same difference. No, because nobody's punching. And it's not. You get up and shake hands, and that's the end of it. You're happy I'll shake your hand now? So you're telling you me win, you're good job. <laughs> you win. Do I get $100 again? No. <laughs> so... You blow a spec call. You grew up hunting specs. I didn't grow up hunting specs. I just started hunting specs about a year ago. Okay, so you grew up. What'd you hunt growing up? Just ducks. Just ducks. So yeah. what else? Do you you cook and eat everything. You're yeah. a, you're a bona fide coon ass. Mm-hmm. I will give you that. Me and Tony got a pig in the ground right now. You got a pig in the ground. What's your favorite meal that you cook? Because you're a good cook. I probably like bald crabs the best, honestly. Bald crab. Oh yeah, I'll tear up some bald crabs. I used to love crawfish, and then too since, much work. Since I'm a commercial crawfish fisherman, I'll catch five, six hundred sacks in a year, and I'm just like, "That's a hundred bucks. That's why the fuck am I going to be eating a hundred dollar bill?" Right, and it's too much work. Yeah, you got to really crack is. all the little ones, and then you got to pull. It's just too much work. I'm not about. I used to really like crawfish, but then I grew up. Mm-hmm. I ain't about that work anymore. No. The so you, you crabs think it's too are much easy work? to eat, though. No, no, they just taste better. They've got uh, a sweeter meat in them. Yeah, because you're not getting the big, big crabs, right? No, they're pretty good size. And how did you tell me the other day you cooked them? You, you told me, or you caught them. You said it was no problem to catch them. Yeah, it's no problem to catch crabs. You just got to find them. Once you find them, it's on. You throw crab pots out, like big crab traps are square. They're probably three foot long, three foot wide squares. And they're set up to where they have little funnels in the top. And they come in, and then they fall on the bottom, and they can't get back out. So how many, like, if you're doing a crab, if you, for all these guys right here, if he's going to do crabs for us, how many crabs would you? How many people? Uh, there's 12, let's say a dozen of us. A bushel, a bushel and a half, depending on how much fixings you have. What's a bushel? Hey, guys, y'all got to. I think it's 60 crabs in a bushel. 60 crabs in a bushel. So that's yeah. five crabs a person yeah, and I'd a say. half. So it's eight crabs per person. God dang, that's a lot of crabs, I think. Well, you got to figure they're going to have sausage and potatoes and stuff. You want enough left over that you could take them and make a stew or a gumbo or something out of the meat, too. It's Who's mul- taking all the crab out of the crab shot? That's a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But it's not that bad. If you get a really full crab, it's a pain in the ass. But if they got a little room in there, it comes right out. So when you do gumbo, do you you cooking a whole crab in there or just the meat? No, just the meat. So they make a crab press that we make at home. And it's just set up with aluminum uh, half circle, like a piece of aluminum pipe. And it's got a piece of sheet metal on top with a roller. And you just go like this. And all the crab meat comes out the bottom. Hmm. I'm going to tell you what. I wish I lived down there. Can you imagine eating like that all the time? No, I couldn't. The three days in Baton Rouge was enough. A little, a little rich. Low risk, well, I think if you live heavy. down there, you eat, you don't eat like that like that all the time. No, you, you add, don't. You mix it up. Like, we don't use a lot of heavy whipping cream and stuff in our stuff. But if we do, I'm fucked for the cut three days. Oh, that brew is just so heavy. It's heavy all the time. It's like a brick walking around in your stomach. <laughs> Why do you think I'm so fat? It just it just all went around. Well, I was thinking it's because you didn't exercise and ate shitty all the time. But, I mean, if there's other reasons, please tell us. Well, I mean, I do have allergies, and that doesn't help. <laughs> What's the allergies got to do with being fat? Because soy makes me swell real bad. Like, if I eat too much of it, I literally puff up. My whole face will puff up and everything. When I quit eating soy, I dropped like 40 pounds in two months. What are we having around here that's all soy that you're having? Pretty much everything has soy in it. It's used as a filler. I'm not going to argue with him. A kid can do a lot of things. Are you confused by this, Happy? Mm, no. Have you kept so thin? Walked. I don't know. <laughs> you walk? I guess. Walk a lot. So this summer you did you didn't weld this summer. You worked mm-hmm. at Menards. Yep. You used a forklift operator. Yeah. Did you fuck anything up there? Did you wreck anything? <laughs> oh, drop anything? Fuck. I, you drop a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody drops a bunch of shit. Break some two by fours every now and then. Break break a bunch of shit there. That's Patio just furniture now. <laughs> what? Patio furniture? Mm, no, we deal with like deck boards and all sorts oh. of stuff like that. And you break a lot of that stuff. That stuff so it slides off your forks easily. So you're excited about year three? Oh yeah. Year two, you went, you come out of your shell. The first year, you was very, very quiet and shy. Last year, you weren't at all. So I'm assuming you won't be this year at yeah. all. Probably not. You're gonna whip these young guys into shape? <laughs> no, no. I, they got figured out. No, they'll figure who, it out. Who, on who are you gonna miss the most? Who who left? Uh, I'll probably miss Yoder because he was my roommate. Yoder's a good. He's gonna be a hard loss for us right here. He was a yeah. good guy. Who's your roommate this year? Uh, it might be Poppy or somebody. I don't know. I, I don't have one yet. Was Yoder pretty clean? 
Yeah, he was pretty organized. I mean, seriously, you asked that? I was just I was setting him up for the next. Oh, okay. Yeah, Yoda was pretty organized. He kept to his side, and I kept to my side. You'll have all the poppy shit. All of, there are no sides with poppy. It's just all his. You might wake up one day and he might have a foot in your bed. I mean, he's just a, an aggressive sleeper. Is that the nice way of saying he's a fucking pig? No, I didn't say pig. Well, I did. Aggressive. He doesn't pick aggressive up after sleeper. himself at all. He's gotten better. And he's I just trying so. to be nice. He's, he's gotten better. Be nice. Those first couple of years in Oklahoma, you're all like <laughs> in a in a room about this size, and yeah. Him and Zach, had, him and Zach had a system, so it, it all worked out. This, this is no shit. The bed up there, kabam! Hear a noise one time. What happened? I don't know. Like I don't know what happened. The bed fell through the frame on the floor. He slept that way all year long, the whole thing. So he had a big gap of he had to crawl up over the frame to get out every time. But he's the most aggressive person I've ever seen in my life. He, he's wormy. He don't know how to be still a car anything at all. I mean, it's he does not pick up after himself at all. Mm. There's another person. Hunter's the same way too. Hunter mm-hmm. is really bad about not, about picking up after himself. Oof. Does your mom pick up after you all the time? No, nope. I just get my ass beat. <laughs> you yeah. should probably pick that up. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. Wood spoons were my mom's best friend. Now you have a brother that's a furry. I do, and his girlfriend. And they're furries. Mm-hmm. That's got to be an interesting conversation because you're a normal. You're normal. But you dressed for up what? as a furry one time, though, right? No, never. I that didn't even was, dress up for that Halloween. That was a lie ever. that Tony perpetrated. Tony just likes to make me look like a fool all the time. Gotcha. So well, that that is, that distracts from him, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. But but so your brothers, because you're a normal, you're a normal kid that would have grown up in my age deal. I mean, you can fix anything, do anything. You're very handy about stuff. You talk a freaking ton. You never shut up. But how do you handle having a... Because you're so opposite of a furry to have a furry for a brother. Just don't talk to him. He locks himself up in his room. He does what he does. I go outside and do my thing. I mean, he actually went to a furry convention, right? Yeah. What yeah. animal does he identify as? Fuck, I don't know. I don't talk to him that much. Oh. So, like, at Christmas I'm, or holidays, you're going to go home for the holiday. Are we buying him catnip or are we buying him fucking Alpo? What like, are we well, doing? He... I don't think he's to that point yet. His girlfriend likes to use a litter box on the weekends sometimes. No, she doesn't. <laughs> That's a lie. Hey, the home school room? kids are fucking weird, man. No, Does he got... have one as a room? Not that I know of, but I'm not <laughs> home either. He a litter box on weekends. His girlfriend? <laughs> Seriously? Or are you fucking with me? I'm pretty sure her and her friends use litter boxes, yes. Uh, she identifies <laughs> as a cat. Yeah. Do you have one at your school, too? No, I didn't go to school. I was homeschooled. Oh. I got kicked out for fighting, remember? <laughs> no, you didn't tell me that. No. I know I told Jeff that. <laughs> but, no, so, so... <laughs> the girl I met here uses yeah. litter box. Yeah, she even told you that. Remember her and her friend use litter boxes on the weekends. I don't. I don't think I remember that. I would have remembered that conversation. Oh yeah, she said she was. I was like, you got to get your friend on the podcast because she really thinks she's a cat. Like she wears paws and ears and tail and everything. Did they realize that real cats don't put shit on? That that's really how they are. Uh, I don't fucking. They don't know. have to pretend to be anything. Like they just are a cat. Well, they pretend. How do we come here in society where people don't fuck with you for that shit? Because if I was in school, homeschooled, right? Yeah, homeschooled. Yeah, yeah, homeschooled. Just let it is fucking the other furry one? Yeah, do? the other girls. Uh huh. Trust me, at my school, if you'd have done that shit, we'd have been fucking on your ass. <laughs> meow, meow. I mean, fuck. <laughs> There's no way. I can't imagine that people really think they're a damn animal. Yeah. I told him. I said, when it comes down to hunting season, you better not walk out of just like a deer because you will get fucking shot. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't. I don't understand. I don't. I don't want to be around my shit any longer than I have to be. I agree. You know what I mean. I, I don't want to. I don't want it in a fucking corner after I just dropped a deuce. Yeah. No really. matter how much kitty litter I put over it, there's something else. Let me tell you, something else. I just don't talk to them. I just let them do their thing because I do rice fields and stuff. I'm the only one that does the farming side of things. Me, my dad, and my grandpa. My other two boys, they just play on games and. Talk about furry stuff and talk about furry stuff. How many, bro- how many brothers do you have? I have two brothers. They're and twins. They're both furries? No, no. Just the other one? one's somewhat normal. Okay. I kind of took him under my wing. I got somewhat, him. In the- got him away from him. Yeah. Normal. He doesn't have a girlfriend that shits in a box in the room. No, no. His girlfriend's fucking Catholic, and she's got a tight leash on him. Let me tell you. <laughs> you gotta be. Yeah. Like she sees how far off the other one went. She's like, listen. I got to keep this shit reined in or he's going to drift too far to one side. <laughs> Can you imagine the holidays at Charles' house? Oh, it's it's something else, let me tell you. Now, your mom's big on Halloween like my wife is and puts all this. Y'all got five acres of shit she yeah, puts in. Yeah, five acres of freaking shit. One year we did. We got 70 acres we own, 
She had the fucking levees in the back around the crawfish ponds decorated and everything. No, who puts all who puts and picks up all this stuff? Uh, me, my brothers, my mom, and my dad. If he's home. So basically, it's the furry, the Catholic lover, and your mom are doing this now, right? Yeah, pretty much. Appreciate Jeff getting me out of it this year. <laughs> You're quite welcome. You've done, you've done a really good job. You've been a good hand. You killed Andy's dog. Damn, he died other, on his own. Other than that one little hiccup. Somebody should have told me he was sick before you brought him over didn't here. Know didn't know he was sick. sick. Well, you, you found out as soon as we did. Well, yeah, I know. I still feel bad about that. There's nothing I could have done about it, unfortunately. That's a bad deal. I hate to put some deal on it, but you, that's what you're known for. That's right what you're known for. Fucking shit up. First, right. first, uh, first big got first big job. Yep. Yeah, just Hitting don't let just don't let Lou die wrecking yep. trucks and yeah, and you yeah. have you have wrecked everybody's vehicles already. So yeah, you're not driving mine. <laughs> I don't want to drive yours anyways. Mine's nicer. <laughs> okay, even though it's wrecked. <laughs> okay, caretaker, y'all are off. We'll get the next ones in now. Hey, can you get me a Pellegrino, please? Yeah, I grab you one. Thank you. Yep. Jeff, you want something to drink? A bottle of water. If that I, if if Cisco brung water, if not, bring me a Pellegrino also, please. Thank you. We'll do, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do string bean and big boy. Okay. String bean and big boy. How about that? We'll be knocking stuff off. You are the guy that we got those chairs for right there, my friend. Perfect. You and Blake Poppy. Because Blake will waller. Those are big boy chairs. Does it, does it feel nice on your ass? Feels great. Good. Good. Okay. Brody, where are you from? Uh, North Vernon, Indiana. Where? North Vernon, Indiana. Where, where is North Vernon, Indiana? At? It's about halfway between Indianapolis and uh, Louisville, Kentucky. And Louisville. So do you, you're more Indiana or more Kentucky? No, nah, I'm more Indiana. All Indiana. All Indiana. You don't like people from Kentucky? Uh, I, I, I like them. I just don't associate with them very much. You don't hang no out reason. much? Yeah, no so reason. To you're not a basketball person then? Or you uh, are? Not anymore. I used well, to. Be. Well, then people in Kentucky love that shit. I had people here last year, and they was like watching a preseason. They're passionate about it. Yeah, basketball. I was like, God, I'm out of here. They get all worked shit. up about it. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I've got a friend of mine that's on Facebook, and he's all about yeah. Indiana. I mean, Kentucky basketball all the time. Now, Jose, where are you from? Grand Island, Nebraska. Grand Island, Nebraska, home of the train station. Sure. A lot of train stuff. You never know how big the train deal is there. There's trains everywhere in it's Nebraska. The, it's, well, it's the biggest train. Uh, Yard in um, North America, I believe. Are you thinking about North Platte? North Platte might be where I'm yeah, thinking of. I think so it's Grand North Island. Platte. Where's Grand Island at then? I've uh, been there. He's from Nebraska, not me. Yeah. About 40 minutes west or east of Kearney, hour and a half. Oh, so you're right west by Blake. Lincoln. How far are you? Oh, no, no, no. Blake's clear like four or okay, five Okay, okay. You're in eastern Nebraska then. Kind of central eastern, yeah. Central eastern. Big liberal, right? No. Kamala, you're not a Kamala person? No, sir. Okay, good for you. What about you? No, yes, sir. No. <laughs> Did y'all vote before y'all came? Yeah. You did? What about you, Jose? I was 30 minutes late. They wouldn't give me my ballot. Oh, really? Yep. Well, if we lose Nebraska, you're the reason. Yeah. By one vote, it's on you. I'm going to take the fall for it, I you're, guess. You're, you're going to be the guy. You will be the man. So I guess you grew up shooting mallards in, right? Yep, mallards and big honkers on the river. And big honkers. You excited to try to shoot some specs? Yeah, we hunted in North Dakota a little bit before it came in down here, and they're tough. They're real tough. Everybody's told me how tough the specs have been this, this fall. They said... Uh, talked to Stacy Coker, good friend of mine in uh, Arkansas. In Arkansas, and he they've had a really hard start. I think they've been hunting now five six days. It's been a really tough year so far for them. How are they? Th like what they do? Well, <clears throat> for starters, we didn't have any win. Okay, so I mean that's we're locked out of the gate there. But they just they'd look get sixty yards and then they they wouldn't flare. They wouldn't just peel off and they. I talked to the kid that was hunting up there that we were hunting with. And he said they've been there for 10, 15 days before we got there. So hey, Were you hunting over Canada them. decoys or spec decoys? Well, that was the other half of our problem. The first day, we tried Canada's, and then they didn't want to play. And he didn't have any specs. We tried to go to Shields. They didn't have specs. So we went down to – or he, he had a bunch of snow socks. Well, they didn't have any wind, so they didn't look yeah. too good either. But we tried that, and same yeah. story. They've been. Everybody said they've been dicks this year. Their birds are two or three weeks behind right now. Could you tell if they were juvies or yeah. were they? Yeah. So they we were shot. Juvies? We hunted specs two days and we shot twenty six specs all together, and only two had bars and a white. I wonder if they're just too young. I just wonder if they're just like too stupid. You know, like they're almost too dumb to work. I don't know. That's weird though. That that they'd be juvies and not do it. Yeah, we had the pick of the litter. I bet the one roost. I bet there was. 
two hundred thousand geese on it. Really? I've never seen so many specks in my life. Right. This and this was a week ago. Yeah, this was we would have been week Wednesdays when we went up yeah. there. Everybody says everything is way behind still right now. So hopefully we're gonna get, we got north we got a good north wind now, mm-hmm. which means we're gonna pick up some birds. I hadn't looked at bird casts to see what they had, and then we're gonna have another good north wind. I think on Monday. I think highs fifty nine on Tuesday. Really? Yeah. So for. I mean, that's not cold, but for this year, that's a big drop from what it's been like. It's been absolutely terribly warm. Yeah. Yeah. Next weekend, we're going to be in the 50s. And what about you, Indiana? You got any experience hunting specs? They coming through your neck of the woods yet? We get about a... We usually get a group comes through every year, but they've been shot at from right. everywhere, so they don't they do not do anything. Yeah. They get nervous landing with big geese, let alone decoy spreads. So. Yeah. What 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 do you think about hunting big geese? Have you have you hunted little geese? Because I say they're the easiest to kill. I haven't. I've messed with big uh, geese always. Yeah, big geese, but they're temperamental too, though. Like sometimes you'll just set up and they'll just go land fifty yards. Oh yeah, out. yeah. I mean they're, I don't know, moody. I think they're all females. <laughs> now, do you have a girlfriend? Yeah, you do. Yep. What about big boy? Do you have a girlfriend? No, sir. You looking for one? I got told a long time ago the only thing that's cheaper to rent though is women. Pretty damn good advice. <laughs> so are you in the if market it for renting them? flies or floats, it's cheaper to rent it. Yep. So are you in the market for renting them? I'm always in the market for renting them. Tony? <laughs> you, got, you got to get, you got to hook up with Tony. He knows the place. <laughs> you can rent them by the hour or by the pound? Preferably by the hour. <laughs> <laughs> Either way. Either way, Tony's your guy. I had a buddy of mine had a big old wife, and he said one time she would be a stripper. And he said the only way she'd make him money is they paid her by the pound. So she made her money. So is your girlfriend okay with you being here? Uh, she's getting used to it. How long have you been dating? Uh, just over two years. Is this your first guiding job? Mm-hmm. So this was a shock to her. Yeah. What? What? How, when did you tell her? Hey, I'm probably going to go on the road. So I'll say this because she won't listen to this, but I told her. I met you guys in Nashville, and I told her after that because she got mad at me that I had already got the job. Oh, and didn't tell her? <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't tell her that I hadn't heard back from you guys until, well. So she thought she's thought since February that I've had the job. Okay. But I just told her, given her time to leave me if she wanted to, and she didn't. So Why would she leave you? Uh, she likes to be with me. She likes to, like a puppy dog. So she's a Klingon. Yeah, a little bit. So who runs a relationship, you or her? I uh, mean, she just—he's down here, isn't he? I'm um, just asking. Yeah, a lot of my buddies didn't think I'd. They thought I'd chicken out. And oh, stay really? Home. Yeah. So what do you do at home? I uh, worked at a horse farm for the past three years. How what? old are you? Nineteen. And y'all been together? So you are high school sweethearts. Yeah. Well, I was. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. So nineteen years old, and you halfway across the country to do something that you enjoy doing. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. She'll be around for another ten years. You ain't gonna hurry. Yeah. Yeah. I got time. What do you do at the horse farm? Uh, I managed the horse farm ever since I've been there. Um, raised cutting horses. So. Do you ride cutting horses? Mm, a little bit. So. Well, that's a rich person's game right there. Yeah. You know, there ain't no poor people in the, in the cutting horses. No, there ain't. So. so, Jose. Been on many horses? Yeah. Yeah? I grew up with horses. Really? Yeah. Are you Mexican? Half Mexican, yep. Okay, well, I just Which figured half? Jose... My dad's half. <laughs> so your dad's masking then? Yep. Okay. That's good. Texas. Do you speak Spanish? A little bit. I understand more. So when my dad would talk to me, I would respond in English. That kind of fucked me. <laughs> Why? Because I, I, I know the words when I hear them, but I just can't come up with them on my own half the time. <laughs> so did you grow up on farmland, a farm kid? or? Well, technically no, but I've we've always run around with farm kids. And then I've worked at the co-op since I got out of high school running Custom applicator running sprayers and driving truck and whatnot. Well, you and Blake Poppy are going to get along. God almighty, I've got to have so much to talk about. If you think you ever want to move to western Nebraska, Blake's got, he, like, he's, he'll put you on a sprayer. He'll what buy you mean? a sprayer, and you can just. Depends on how flat it is. I don't want to go up there and be fucking navigating the mountains. And no, 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 he's, no. He's flat. flat. It is. Flat. Yes, yeah, you can Perkins see your County. Do- yeah, you can see, yeah, Perkins County, baby. You can see your dog run away for four days out there. Really? I've only been out to like Scott's Bluff and it's pretty hilly. Yeah, well, yeah, this yeah. is, it'd be east of there. Yeah. Blake's looking for a, sp- for a sprayer. Might I'll, have, might I'll have a job. I'll talk to him about it. Yeah. And yeah. you can speak Spanish to him too. Yeah, try to. Well, he don't, he wouldn't understand it. He said <laughs> anyway, so it really wouldn't matter. Blake's so, high, Blake's high cotton, man. He'll, he'll put GPSs on there. You just got to 
punch, punch it in and go. So are you a big Husker fan too then? I try to be, like when they're not choking. So th- I think they've had a good year this year. They should have beat Ohio they, State the other day. They've been better than they have been. There's no, no doubt about it. No, they're a big-time improvement. They've, they've, they're a really, they, they've come a long way, and they legitimately had a chance to beat Ohio oh, State yeah. the other day. They played a good game. It was a good football game. I don't like to blame the refs, but that's yeah. okay. We it was have pretty greasy here. that time. Yeah. yeah. Is this your first guiding job? Yep. Yeah? What made you want to come down here? Oh, I've always wanted to do it, but I never really had the brass to do it, for like afraid financially. Yeah. But I just said, screw it. I'm going to try it. Are you the guy that sent me the resume that said, I think Andy's a big fucking dick, Jeff, and I like you the best? Yeah, something that's like that. That's yeah. right. got the that job. Was, that's right. Yeah, I just want to make sure I want to make sure I got everybody kind of queued up to who's. Yep. That's right. what I thought. Well, All right. Well, we look forward to you guys. Um, y'all, like, you worried about anything nervous? No. Our little introduction talk to everybody today, did it make you nervous at all? Because we highlighted all the shit you can't do. No. The, the things you can it, do. Most of it I kind of figure was common sense. Yeah. Yeah. We've had some people here without common sense. Yeah. It's not common anymore. No, it's damn sure not. The problem is if you don't like set boundaries, then everybody, well, you know, I didn't know I couldn't leave yeah. 18 five gallon buckets of shotgun shells down there. It's like. Think it yep. think it works? Problem is parents stop whooping their kids' ass. That's what happened. Uh, they, that's how we got furries, evidently. Yep. It's all started in Louisiana and home. Do you have any furries in Nebraska where you are? I've never seen one. What about where you are in Indiana? Yeah. You have furries there? Yeah, in, in high school. So we had a, a <laughs> counselor. What the she hell? Was, we, like, she called it the Zen Den. It was like her area. Yeah. And she'd let kids smoke pot in there. She had a litter box in there. And she got fired after At a first public year. school? Yeah. How big of she a school? Made it, she made it a year? Uh, I, I don't know if it I was a full cool year. But, cool. Yeah. How, how big of a school? Uh, I think my grad- graduating class is four, five hundred. It's a big class, a big school. Yeah. How many did you graduate with, Jeff? About four hundred people. So we had a smoking area because kids smoking was, wasn't looked frowned upon like it is now. But you had to go outside. It was a sm- and kids went there and smoked all the time. What's funny is you, you had to be eighteen to buy cigarettes, but there'd be freshman people up there smoking, but. I can't remember the name of it. I'm going to ask Max. They still had that when he was in school because we went to the same high school. But uh, they had a smoking area at, well, back when I was in school, but we never had somewhere where you smoke pot and put on. If you were a furry, what furry would you be? If you had to pick. I don't know. Probably a deer. So at that a point, deer. I'd just get hit in the headlights. Okay. <laughs> what about I, you? My favorite Mexican. What would you be? I think I just pass on the whole thing. No, <laughs> you got you to pick an you got to pick an animal to be. I'd probably take the deer too, end it as fast as possible. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's get the next two in here. Uh, be Max and Lexi. You can sit right there, Lexi. Okay. Be easier on my fingers. What are you wearing for shoes? Oh, I've got Crocs on. Got stickers, got stickers, stickers all in. Well, you hear crunch, yeah, crunch, crunch. Bad. Year number four. Four, four years. I've done a great job. Lexi takes care of all of our camera video, takes a lot of pictures for our social media that we post all the time. I don't tag her all the time. She gets mad at me. And she also helps around in the office when you check in here. And she takes helps in the kitchen at night. It's very, very good. Yeah. What are you doing at home now? You working for a graphic artist? A uh, graphic shop. Yeah, I run the graphic shop. I'll do graphic design on the side sometimes. Do you like it? Yeah, it's okay. It gets stressful every once in a while. Why? Uh, just the push of stuff. My boss doesn't like to tell people no. He's Uh-oh. like, oh, Her you need camera? that tomorrow? Sure. Scoot it in. Get your camera so it don't fall. I want somebody to bump that damn thing. It makes me nervous. Right. You're, uh, so you get nervous when all, you got deadlines? I don't really get nervous. It just stresses me out sometimes. Have you ever had a client that just didn't like anything you done? It didn't matter what you did. It wasn't what they wanted. Yes. That would be tough to try to figure out what someone else has got in their head for what they want right terrible though i had one lady she i mean i would did exactly what she wanted to but she just didn't like it in the end so we always went back to what i gave her in the first place and then that's what she would decide to go with yeah it's a tough deal i get that with shirts because i'll get an image i've got something in my mind i think mm-hmm. and then we go back and forth and then it usually if i would be just better off to let everybody else choose my last Choice of shirts did not do very good. I've had two that didn't do very good at all. That was my, I, that'll be really great, blah, blah, blah. And then we'll get one that I think, uh, and then everybody just loves it and buys it. Yeah. You should do a pool at the lodge. A what? Pole. Like a pool. Pole? Mm-hmm. What'd you call it? A pool? A pole. A pole. 
of what the shirt's going to be. Yeah. We're fixing to have some a new design that's coming in that they're going to be sending me with the new hoodies. And when they do it, I'll do it. I'll, I'm going to do that. I'm going to quit shipping shirts and stuff, though. For, shipping is absolutely ridiculous in this country to ship something. Yeah, we've noticed that back home. It's too. terrible. I mean, we're talking something that used to be five, six, seven dollars is now 15 bucks. And, and if you ain't going to make no money on a shirt, why would you, you know, I'm not going to sell sh- ship sir- shirts and make not, not, that's why not. That's why I don't push them no more. Yeah. But, and I'm surprised there's not more people doing that because the shipping costs are so high. You got an engagement ring yet? Nope. So what's going on there? I don't know. I mean, how long have you and Chandler been together? It'll be five years in November. How old are you? 22. How old's Chandler? 26. So he's taking my advice. 38. <laughs> smart, guy, smart guy. He'll be 27 in January and I'll be 23 in November. So Maybe you, he's waiting for you to get to a certain age. Maybe you feel like he robbed the cradle. Uh, I mean, he waited to date me until I was 18, so too. See there. <laughs> so, right? Maybe maybe he's waiting on you to mar- ask him to marry you. It, this is a new no. age. We've got furries and we've got everything else. A he woman can a, do this. He would be mad. He would be so mad at me if I tried to do that. Mm. Are wedding bells in the future at all? Have y'all even discussed this? Yeah, I mean, we've joked about it. We've talked no, about it. No, not you joke. aren't joking. There, no, there you has been joking. joking. There's been joking. You, no. you joked about it to bring it up. Sometimes, but I don't know. It's funny because he seems like he has more of it planned out than I do. What Does his family want him to marry you? I think so. I'm, I mean, they message me more than they message Does him. your family want you to marry him? Yeah. So I'd then so. someone's got to kickstart this thing going. That's a great idea, I guess. I mean, you're only 22, though. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm they, not worried about it. I think Jesse was 22 when we got married. So you were 18 when your first year you came down here, 19? 19. God almighty, I didn't realize that. Well, it was my birthday like that week, right when I got down here. I get, the, the years roll together, and mm-hmm. it just, I just, that's crazy to think of that you were that young and you came here. And these guys get here, and some of them are scared. And here was a girl that came here. And now that everybody's gone, which which one of those guys are you most worried about? Worried about in which way? I'm making it. Which one should we fire right now? Listen, this <laughs> should was, we fire? That, that orientation, it was all like, you know, trying to find out the weak link. Who are we, who are we canning? I don't even know. I feel like I don't know them that well either. Well, you got to listen. First impressions, they're usually right. Yeah. Let's bring them in here. Well, let's, let's fire one of them. They're all farm kids, which makes me happy. Yeah. They all seem knowledgeable about different things. Yeah, I mean, none, so of, none of them have me nervous. There's been times people have come in here that have me nervous. And, and none of them have me nervous right now. I'm a little worried about string bean with the ties back at home. You worried about that his was my only his one. Just hearing that, you I worry, mean, that's the only one that you worry his girlfriend's gonna give his butt. No, it just he's what 19, right? Yeah, he yeah. really, really, he, back at home he really, really, really wanted this job and stuff. I don't think so. I don't. I'll be the ones that are here right now. I'll be surprised if we have any. And I, every every year you have some kid or somebody that just don't work. But my first impressions, I'm not usually there would be somebody here. I'm a little nervous about. Eh, Let's about just that. fire happy. How about that? Just get rid of him. Okay. He probably just, wouldn't yell at you, or no, he'd just be like, "Oh, <laughs> he'd be okay, like, oh, well, okay, that was your decision." No, we don't have a, we don't have a lot of egos, but we got young guys too that are also probably scared to say something, <clears> and then that, and that'll happen. Um, have you noticed that Hunter talks a lot? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's just no silence. Like there's, he'll even turn the radio up in the truck, but then he always he turns it back down. Keeps talking. Oh, he he is a talker. He's a. It's he not is, a bad thing. No, either. he is a great kid, and he's been a great hand, and I really, really, really like him. I have to get on to him some things about, about little things, mm-hmm. big things don't worry. But if I tell him to do something, he's very responsible and does everything. He's he's a great kid, but by God, he talks. When Josh Moore left here, I figured we're not going to have anybody talk like that again, and I was wrong. This kid talks a bunch. Now. Luckily, he is going to be a helper guide most of the year, so he will not scout with me, so I will not have to be able to listen to him in the car while we scout. You could just have the designated scouter that's going to go with him. Yeah. I mean, it's not hard to remember where you're going. You don't have to be a head guide to do that. Do you want him scouting with us all the time right no, now? No, that's what I'm saying. He doesn't even have to scout. Oh, okay. Just whoever he's going to go with the next day can scout and then be like, hey, I got where we're going to go. But he, he, is a, he is a talker. There is no doubt about that. He talks and talks and talks to hear himself talk. He's a very, very good kid, and he works hard. He's a hard worker, and he's done everything I've wanted. And with the customers during Dove season, he was out of this world. They loved him to death. Mm-hmm. Done a good job. It's just crazy to me that I'm the old man now. Oh, you're not just the old man. You know what way, I mean? You're a generation ahead now. Yeah, easily, yeah. Yes. I mean, that's maybe right. two generations ahead. 
but it's just like I don't know that I started to notice the age difference with the last group of kids that we had here. So like Josh Moore and all them, mm -hmm. but like even them, I could kind of relate to like the 19 year old and like, I'm, I'm old. You know I'm what's old. crazy? What? They're closer to Reese's age than your age. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So Reese probably has music interest and in stuff that they have. Oh, I guarantee you like the whole, uh, YouTube watching video games on YouTube. I don't know if these kids will, but like, just because they're they're country kids and everything, but yeah. Hold on just a minute. Yeah. You're letting Reese watch YouTube videos of video games? Yeah. You're the same person that was not gonna let him do any of this kind of stuff, but you've given what him do you, mean? you used to be an anti tablet, anti this, anti that, but as he's getting older and getting a mind of his own, it's hard to battle. Well, he it. just watches it in the morning before school. Well, I understand. Just replace cartoons is what it's done. Right. So he's making these kids on YouTube very wealthy. Yes, he is. Very well. But like what's crazy is like they'll have Five million. He'll watch a video of somebody playing whatever. Eight million views. Yeah, kids driving a Lamborghini that's making that. Hundred percent. Well, you ought to sit there and Reese do that. Right. Yeah. That's what you Monetize do. that. So, uh, but I'm the old. I'm the old guy now. Did you? I'm back to your family real quick. Did you ever think you'd have a son that talks back to you? No. I, I don't. I, I don't really know how to answer a that. Andy never never talked back. I I, re, I honestly he doesn't talk back. He oh. does what I ask him to, but it's just I've seen he, him he voices talk, his opinion. Yeah, I see him talk back a lot. He does, and it's a surprise. It does, but it's not a smart Alec talk back. I've seen him be he's a smart never disrespectful. Ass. You just don't hear him, Andy. Sometimes he's a typical oh. kid, but and I'm not saying he's no different than any other kid. But Andy, you Andy never spoke back, or never talked back to any, but ever that I remember. And Reese, when he when he does talk back and stuff, I'm like, boy, that's that sure blood coming at him because that's mm -hmm. coming from his mama because Andy never liked it like that. But he's a typical teen, a kid that's preteen, and it's only gonna get worse. I just worry about what I'm gonna talk about in the blind this year. Is that those kids, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you don't know, honey. That's the, that's the thing you'll have in common with them is the hunting, and and they'll learn from you, and you'll learn a little bit from them maybe too. I doubt that you will. What am I gonna learn? You may be surprised. Me, I learn all the time. I learn from them. Maybe that's maybe that's my downfall. I maybe don't you can learn. learn about furries. That 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 conversation is only going to get you so far. Have you seen? Have you ever been around a furry? Lexi? No, I haven't. I haven't they don't have those in Pennsylvania. Y'all got. They, I've though, heard so. of like I've heard of them in schools now, but I'm I've been out of school now for a while. I've never seen. I mean, I don't. I haven't. I haven't seen anything around. Nothing at fairs. No, I, don't, I don't know. Like, like, I don't know if I'm lying. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm around dairy cows because we show we show cows and nobody I, like watching well, see there, how they walk. That, see there, that's why you're around farm people. Yeah, and that shit they don't put up. They don't. They don't play that game. I guess is the word I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Same with me. I don't go to Walmart, so I don't see shit like that. I think if you go to Walmart, you're gonna see more of that crap. I would I would like to know the statistic on furries as opposed to good families and bad families, or, or when I say bad families and good families, economic families. I bet right. all of them are upper middle class. You think? I don't so? think being a furry is a poor person's game, because I could see that. I just think that things are. T if you have time to think to to act out being a furry, you have no other worries in your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like stable home, upper middle class. And I'm gonna say white people. I don't think a whole lot of only a whole lot of other ethnicities are allowing their kid to be a furry. Nor no, should they probably. Shit, no, they're smarter than that crap. I mean, that's that's you're not seeing no black kid dressing up like freaking a fur baby and his parents being okay with that. Right. His mama snap his neck in two, and that's what they need. That's that's it's ridiculous. So you think it's more of a white a, I think it's an upper middle white class thing. Would be just the little bit that I've heard about it today, that's what I'm going with. <laughs> that's your demographic of furries. <laughs> it, just, it just blows my mind that we're in a point where someone thinks they're a fucking cat. Never, May th not, never thought we'd live in that world. Maybe I can just hunt with Blake all year. There you go. Probably won't happen. That's where he's going to shut that down. Be good for Blake and you to be separated a lot. I don't think so. Yep. I don't know. It's good for the camera. See? It is good. So we'll 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 do some of that later. It's just a different world with us. The guides are getting younger, but they I don't all think have they're the getting younger. No, they're not. They're not getting it, younger. We're just getting, gotten we're older. older. <laughs> yes, because like I think about the the guys that I learned the most from when I was in my teenage years, 
Josh Mason was 19 when he got out here. Mm-hmm. Um, Dave Reese was probably the old guy then, and he was probably 25. He was about Tony's age, so 27, 25. Right, mid-20s. Yep. That was the old guy. But all of those guys were in that 19 to 23-year-old range. That's the people I like to hire because they have a lot of energy and they work hard and they're good hunters. Once I can take a, we can take a kid that likes to hunt, that's passionate about hunting, and he can be a really good guide because he has to go hunt every day. He's not driving a car scouting. Like a lot of places you hire a guy and he scouts all the time. If they come here, they're going to get to work. Those kids are going to get a hunt six days a week. That's what they're passionate about anyways. <clears throat> and so you find that and they become really good. What you got to do is work on making them – the hunting part's not the problem – it's the customer service and being good to people. They seem to be respectful kids. And, and that's the thing with the older guys. All the older guys are leaders are respectful kids. So they'll make them respectful kids or mm-hmm. respectful. I mean, he'll, how, how old's Nolan? 20, 21? I think 21. Yeah. I mean, he's a great kid. I mean, I call him a kid. He's not, but that's, that's the kind of people that I want. I would much rather have a young kid that hasn't guided before to work with us with someone that guides every day and can teach him than to hire a 45 year old man that's been guiding for 25 years. Yeah. That 25 year old kid, he's a grouchy son of a bitch. Most of them. Maybe that's my role now. The grouchy old son of a bitch? The grouchy yeah. guy that just knows a lot, but nobody wants to ask. There's very few Dusty Browns out there. Old guys that have been guiding a long time that have great attitudes that are really, really good. So most of them are grouchy. And I'm going to get some guys, oh, damn, but there are some really good ones out there. I'm not saying that. But most of the old guys I know that are still doing this, are not really enjoyable to be around usually. That's me in a nutshell. Yep. Just no fun to be around. All, All right. right. Let's get off here. All right. Lexi, glad you're back. You're number four. Yep. We're going to kick it off in the rain. Love it. So, anyway. All right, everybody. You think it's going to be wet Saturday morning? <laughs> are you really? What are you going to? Okay, here, here I'm going to ask Andy since so it's on camera. You said you're not hunting in the rain. And I'm okay with that. I don't mm-hmm. care. But I'm asking you. What time? When are you going to make this decision? So, like Friday night, you're going to plan on hunting Saturday, or Friday night, you're not planning on even hunting Saturday. I will be out. I will. I will go to the field and get my group set up. Okay, you won't be here Friday evening though. No, I'll be trick or treating. Yeah, we have Halloween. Is this the first year that we've had Halloween and an election? I don't ever remember an election having clients here. I know in 2020 we didn't because me and Tony were still painting think, that guide house. I think the hunting season started last oh. election on Saturday and we voted on Tuesday. Right. We, we, the, we're we like a week early. No, the goose season the last three years we've moved it up. We used to not book a hunt the first weekend and then we've gotten all these uh, calendar birds the last four or five years. We've gotten more and more so we started doing it. But one year they, I don't, screwed, I don't, us, they screwed us out of a week of hunting season. Because it started on like the ninth or whatever. It's Yeah, they moved it. It was back a week or something. But I wonder next year, because I think it always starts like the first full weekend in November. So that could be 8, 9, 10 or whatever, right? I'm going to go back to 2020 on my calendar and look. Because I think it's the first. Well, no, that wouldn't be right because the election's the first Tuesday in November. Mm-hmm. And, and, and 2016, yeah, voting was on November 2nd. Goose and we season started, started on 5th. November 5th. On 2020, goose season started on November the 7th, and, and we voted on November the 3rd. Because I'm telling you, I don't ever remember a time where we had people in-house on an election. Or, or, a, Halloween, or a Halloween to start goose season. Right. It's all the first time. Well, we're trick-or-treating in Knox City on November 1st because yes. we all of our football. football teams out of town. That's a Texas thing, and we're not the only town that does it. A lot of towns in Texas that have away games tonight. Yes. And we'll small towns will do a trick or treating tomorrow because nobody would be in town anyway. Right. So we're not celebrating Halloween tonight. So tomorrow night I will be at the lodge, and then I will go back to the house. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Lexi's going to be filming at our house for the deal. <clears throat> so we will we'll see what happens. Right. But I just Tuesday there's going to be a lot of people eating and getting back to the social room to see what happens. Do you well, think we know Tuesday? No. Mm-hmm. We should. I mean, we should. I, that's I, not what I asked. Uh, yeah, but I said, we? will we? I think. Well, we know to, to, when 2016, because I remember Eric texting me. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning. It was late. Might not, that might, might be an exaggeration. It was late. I stayed up till we it knew. was over in 2016, but it was late. And I, I feel like we knew 2020. I, I think that. The next day. I'm going to. 
I'm going to put it out here right now. I think I think Trump wins on a landslide. I think it shocks how many votes he gets. How long until <clears throat> I think, somebody concedes? I think I think by Thursday. Oh wow! I think the Democrats by Thursday have given up. Two days, huh? Now, I've heard if, two weeks. People saying, "Oh well, they could be. It could be clear to the Christmas." I think Georgia and Arizona, in one of the Rust Belt states, Michigan or Wisconsin will have their results in that night, and Trump will win, not even having to need Pennsylvania. I think Pennsylvania is going to be the stick because they're already having all kinds of problems. The Dominion vote machines are jacked up already, and they know it. And there's a lot – they're cheating. They're going to try to cheat. We all know that. But I think think that he wins Arizona and Georgia and Michigan or Wisconsin will be called by by Wednesday, Thursday. I'm going to be a tired motherfucker Wednesday morning because I'm going to stay up as late as I can Yeah, figuring it out or trying to figure it out. This is the most important election of our lifetime. Say that every every no four no no. Years. This, this, this and I don't think there's ever been one where it's good versus evil. I don't. I think we're up against the media. We're up against everything. But if he loses, I just I can't imagine what's going to happen to our country with the borders and everything that they want to do. And I want to see Trump win, not just because I like Trump, but I want to see RFK take on the FDA and clean up our food and our drugs and big pharma. Ramswamy. And I want to see a. Uh, Elon Musk tackle our federal government's debt and where we're having all of our excess spending and waste. Yeah. And I, and I would love to see that. And I don't know why anybody on either side would be against that. That's good for every American there is. Yeah. And I really don't give two shits about abortion. I'm so tired of hearing about abortion. I'm never going to have one. <clears throat> I don't want to pay for one. I think if you got raped incest or the mother's sick and you get one, I'm all good for that. But otherwise, it's just an excuse for birth control. They've got a thing out right now today in Nevada. Some lady got sick and they didn't. She couldn't qualify for an abortion and all this shit. The Democrats did. She had two times they had to re- resuscitate her from fentanyl abuse while she was pregnant. They had all these different things that she did. They don't tell that story. They just right. some poor lady. She just wanted an abortion, but she couldn't get one. And well, it's because she was high all the time until it was too late. Yeah. And but this is a major election. Every everybody that goes to church needs to vote. Everybody that believes in God needs to vote. Everybody that owns a gun needs to vote. I don't know. Give me an interesting thing. Like I said, Wednesday's gonna be tough because I'm gonna stay up well past my bedtime of nine o'clock. You wanna fix our country and make a le- make voting age about twenty five. Yeah. And that would kill a lot of problems. And I know that sounds really bad for no, everybody I under twenty five. But you have some life. You have you have skin in the game you and some life and, experience. Yeah, you learn a lot yeah. more by the time you're yep. 25. There's a whole lot of kids go off to school that that are liberals in college, and they get real jobs trying to pay their own bills, and they start yeah. seeing all try that tax money taken or, out and try yeah. to buy a house. And then they're like, "Oh shit, what's going on?" Well, too late. Too late then. All right, thank y'all for listening to us. God bless y'all. Have a great week. Peace. Watch for deer.